there's a split within the fitness industry as to which weight is best for muscle growth and on the other hand common beliefs suggest that heavy weight is the best option for muscle growth but is that true well yes and no well in today's video we'll use the latest scientific research behind the use of heavy weight versus light weight and use actual science to help us decide which option is best for muscle growth First, let's cover a factor that's quite important, which is training intensity. Now, this is split into two, however you want to look at it. You have the one rep max and you have the RPE. One rep max being the percentage of your one rep maximum that you can lift. Well, 100% being the amount of weight that can only give you one repetition. And 80% of your one rep max being a weight that's able to give you a repetition of about 7 to 8 reps. Now, on the other hand, the RPE is a scale from 1 to 10 that's used based on your own judgment to measure the amount of intensity during a workout. Now, research suggests that you stay within 30 to 85 percent of your one rep max meaning anything below 30 percent of your one rep max means that the weight will be so light such that the amount of reps needed to reach a required level of effort to at least tickle muscle hypertrophy is so high making the workout last way too long or else anything above 85 percent of your one rep max would just simply mean that the weight is so heavy that you can't even get enough reps in order for you to at least induce muscle hypertrophy and again on top of that obviously your form will be crap now this here is a study that clearly shows that having eight sets of one rep maxes had worse results compared to the training weight that's able to give you about eight to twelve reps and again a 2016 study by dr phillips where 49 men were taken having four years of training experience with a full body training split and funny enough the results found that muscle growth or muscle hypertrophy was not actually dictated by load meaning whether they used lightweight or heavyweight during the experiment the outcome was similar for both sides that's quite interesting this was also backed up by further studies which all came to a similar conclusion and that is lightweight and heavyweight had a similar outcome in as far as muscle growth is concerned for as long as the training volume is equated and the sets are pushed to failure but hear me out because obviously there's a catch to this it's not as simple as it sounds and this is simply because of these two points well a when lifting with heavy weight compared to light weight you increasing strength according to this meta-analysis and b remember that light weight has the same hypertrophic stimulus as heavy weight provided that the reps are pushed to failure and to reach failure with light weight can be exhausting and your training won't be as effective not because of muscle failure but because of exhaustion which finally leads us to this one question which weight should you use well this simply depends on the rep range given the fact that the reps are pushed to failure now there are two mechanisms that contribute to muscle growth you have the mechanical tension and the metabolic stress now the mechanical tension is the mechanism that's triggered by training with heavy weight and a low rep range which activates protein and muscle cells known as the mechanosensors so what these mechanosensors do is that they respond to a muscle stimuli triggering a cascade of genetic signals promoting your body to start building new muscle tissue. And the metabolic stress is a process that leads to the buildup of hydrogen ions, lactate and phosphate, aka the burn or the pump, which is simply triggered when you lift lightweight with a high rep range. Now these affect your muscles in two different ways. Your muscle fibers are divided into two types of muscle fibers. You have type 2 muscle fibers and type 1 muscle fibers, which are triggered differently by these two types of pathways. Now you have type 2 muscle fibers that are triggered by heavyweight training and also have type 1 muscle fibers that are triggered when you're training with lightweight. Now this is simply because your type 1 muscle fibers have a high endurance meaning they are fatigue resistant and because of this you'll be able to get a lot more reps with lightweight. This was also shown by this 2012 study. Now although both of these mechanisms are able to build muscle Type 2 muscle fibers usually grow 50% more than type 1 muscle fibers. I think this also explains the 6 to 12 hypertrophic rep range that's so common, which is simply between these two mechanisms, that is the metabolic stress and mechanical tension. Now, 
when one is triggered, there's less of the other because these are just simply inversely proportional. So in order for us to be able to choose the correct weight, we need to structure our training in such a way that it compensates for both mechanisms. Now, application. Now, research clearly shows that using both mechanisms by incorporating a variations of training reps lead to more muscle growth instead of just sticking to the same rep range, meaning you'll benefit more when using both lightweight and heavyweight training. And that's simply because the strength gains that you get from heavyweight training usually carry over to lightweight training, meaning you'll be able to lift heavier and heavier weight while maintaining the same amount of high reps. Now let's put this into practice. You can utilize things like drop sets, which is a good mixture between lightweight and heavyweight training to get a good muscle building stimulus beyond failure. And again, another thing to consider is that with compound exercises like your squats and deadlifts, these are best trained with a low rep range of about five to 10 reps, whilst isolation movements like your bicep curls are usually best trained with a higher rep range of about 10 to 20 reps so it's best for you to choose as to how you're going to incorporate this to your training to introduce that variation but don't worry i'll give you all the examples now why is this so well this is simply because this is a good mix to help you avoid form breaks and injuries especially when you're training with heavier weight it'll be easier for you to slightly add more weight to your compound movements while maintaining a low rep range than trying to add more weight to isolation movements with a higher rep range. Because imagine trying to lift 100 pounds on a single dumbbell bicep curl, it's not a good idea. Now, an alternative option to this would be to keep the same amount of weight while altering the reps within each training session. For example, if you reach a point where you hit about 15 reps on a bicep curl for three full sets, instead of increasing your reps to a further 30 reps, you can slightly increase the weight and lower the rep range the next time you go into training. Another thing you can utilize is periodization, as in changing your rep range every four to six weeks. Now let's pull up a whiteboard there to further demonstrate how this looks. So if from week one to week four, my rep range is three to five reps, then week five to eight should be eight to 12 reps with a moderate weight. And lastly, week nine to 12, 15 to 20 reps with a light weight. Now, does this strictly equally apply to each and every single person watching this video? Well, no, this actually depends on two factors. Number one, your goal, and number two, your training experience. Now, again, this can also be tied to your goal. Now, again, for your goal, suppose that your priority is actually building more muscle mass than strength itself. Then your rep range would be less towards the one to six heavyweight rep range, meaning more towards a six to 12 rep range within a 60 to 75 percent total training volume with the remaining one to six and 15 to 20 reps spread over over the remaining total volume of sets. And if your goal is to build more strength rather than muscle mass, then 60 to 75% of your rep ranges should be around one to six reps with the remaining volume at a six to 15 rep range. Now, as far as experience is concerned, then if you're fairly new within your training, say one to two years worth of training experience, then there's no need for you to worry as much in as far as dialing into the exact values just stick to 6 to 12 rep range and constantly apply progressive overload however if you are more experienced say intermediate to advanced lifter then your best bet is starting off with a heavyweight low rep training for strength and then ultimately moving over to a higher rep range lightweight training program so at the end of the day both lightweight and heavyweight produces the same effects in as far as muscle growth is concerned provided that the training volume and effort are the same. Now, if you're looking for a structured program that directly integrates this for you in order to help you build more muscle mass, here's the science-based hypertrophy program linked down below. Now, in it, you'll get the program itself, the video exercise demonstrations, and a complete workout tracker alongside with a nutrition plan. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed, subscribe and leave a thumbs up. I'll see you on the next video.